All right, it's half past 11. Time for our next lecture. The second in the series about the vector boson production processes and their relation to QCD effects. Um, we have Valerio again with us. We have the Jeffy here. I think it's the second part of your lecture. And as we um, stopped last time before the number of corrections from the last slides, um, you will start from the right. I think this, yeah, everyone is connecting now. So stage is all yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. And uh, so, right, before moving to, to the second lecture, I would like to uh, complete the yesterday's lecture by discussing non perturbative corrections, which is, uh, which is an important bit that is going to be discussed in the second lecture. So, let me just spend the first five to ten minutes to discuss that. So, yesterday we have introduced the so called CSS formalism and the TMD factorization mostly for describing uh, uh, low QT spectra. It's something that I have uh, omitted. So everything looked very nice and everything seemed to work pretty nice. Something that I've omitted is the fact that the CSS formula, as I've presented it, it just uh, doesn't converge, gives you infinity. So the origin of this divergence is the fact that, uh, if you remember, we need to work in impact parameter space. And uh, in, uh, in this impact parameter space, so we are dealing with, with integrals of this kind. So we are integrating over the absolute value of the parameter space. And we have powers of alpha s, and alpha s is typically computed in something that goes like one over p. This is what I have called actually mu b, which is actually b zero over p. But I mean, this the, the, the behavior is the same. And so you see that when b goes to infinity, we are forced to compute uh, uh, alpha s at very low scales. And so eventually, you know that uh, by doing that, we 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 hit the Landau pole. We we know that uh, the, the the perturbative running of the a strong coupling uh, uh, goes to, to, to infinity at the Landau pole. So actually, and actually the, the divergence is also non-integrable. So actually we really cannot do anything with that. It's, it's uh, the, the, the result is infinity. So uh, the presence of this, uh, uh, of this divergence is just, it's just a signal of our lack of control of, uh, of control on non-perturbative contributions, meaning contributions that are uh, relevant uh, at the order of, uh, at the energies of the order of the, the hadron mass that have to be taken into proper account for, for producing well-behaved predictions. So now just to give you uh, an idea of where these uh, predictions, where these contributions are relevant. So we said that uh, this divergence takes place when B is of the order or larger than lambda, lambda QCD to the minus one. So since uh, B is the uh, Fourier conjugate uh, uh, variable of uh, the QT of the Z, uh, actually, we, we what we expect is that non-perturbative contributions become relevant when QT is of the order of uh, or less uh, of lambda QCD. So here we are talking about around one GB. So when QT becomes of the order of one GB, also non-perturbative contributions are relevant. So we need to take them into account. So now we need to, to find a, a way to regularize this divergence. And so actually, there are different recipes that. Uh, uh, exist on the market, also depending on uh, the formalism used to, to do the calculation, whether it's done in impact parameter space or an indirect space. But uh, I find that the TMD factorization actually provides a particularly transparent uh, way of separating uh, perturbative effects from the perturbative ones. So just let me explain you very briefly how uh, the procedure works to 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 to, iso to, to perform this uh, this isolation. So first, one defines value of b in impact parameter space. So let me call it p max, above which uh, non perturbative effects become uh, significant. So the requirement is, of course, is that one over b is uh, larger of or the order of lambda QCD. So a reasonable value for p max is one gp. So let's assume that. Then one introduces a monotonic function that is often called B star. And so this function has to be such that for B, for small values of B, this behaves like B linearly. But when B becomes very large, then this function tends to be max. And so you see a typical behavior of this uh, B star function in this plot here. So you see that when B is small, uh, actually B is linearly, when B, B, B is large, it tends to, it saturates to B max. Uh, and so this, this is a typical uh, uh, formula, a typical uh, expression for this B star that was actually reintroduced back in 1985 by CSS. 
So, and then finally, when just uh, uh, does a, a very trivial trick. So you take uh, the TMD PDF and just to remind you that TMD PDF enters the, the computation of the cross section in this way. So you have the hard function, then you have uh, this Fourier transform of the, the TMD PDFs. And then what you do, you just uh, multiply uh, and divide the F computed in B by F computed in B star. Then the advantage is that F computed in B star always remains in the perturbative domain because B star never becomes too large. And so alpha is never computed in, in, in values of the scale that are too close to the pole. And then you essentially just isolate everything that is non-perturbative into this function that is called FNP and that actually encodes all the non-perturbative um, contribution. So, uh, and the only, the, the best way today we, we have to, 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 to determine this, uh, this FNP is by fitting it to data. So pretty much as you do for, for standard collinear PDFs. So now I'm not going this, uh, through this uh, slide. So just for me, was what are you frozen for everyone? Okay. Not really much as the I think you had this once yesterday as well, where you had to re reboot. So let's give him a minute until he comes back. I pause the recording in the meantime. All right. Uh, can you see my slides? I don't see them yet, but maybe it's just coming up. Okay, so wait a second. Yes, yes, now they're coming up. All right. So I hope we don't so. see you yet, but we see the slides. All right. Okay, so perhaps I, I, I avoid sharing myself in case this helps uh, the connection being more stable. So, okay, you, you, you've already seen me. <laughs> All right, so uh, as I was saying, so we have introduced this FNP. I hope uh, uh, its production, uh, how its production um, at fixed order uh, performs compared to data. And then we will also look at uh, the, the, the effects of resumation and uh, uh, after we'll see some phenomenological implications of how the, the, the way we, we can describe uh, uh, X production, specifically in, uh, in inclusive X production in gluon gluon fusion that, and the X that eventually decays into a pair of, of photons. So let me start with uh, how much Drelian and uh, how much X. So this slide is actually to motivate the why Drelian is so much uh, important and why its production is not yet that important. So um, in this, uh, in, the, in, the, in the right, uh, in the right plot, you see the uh, total cross section uh, for different processes. Um, as uh, as a function of the the energy of, of the collision in in PP collision, so you see, for instance, highlighted the ATP and the protein TV LAC, but then you also have uh, the so-called high energy LAC and uh, what is now called the FCC at 10 TV. And so what you can see is that the production of Z and W is actually the, the cross section is actually a very large cross section. It's essentially the coreless uh, final state. Uh, uh, whose cross section is, is the largest. And so we see W here and, Z, uh, and the production of the Z here. So the final states are clean. So actually we are talking about detecting leptons and uh, in the case of uh, W production also the, the missing energy. In addition, also, if we had the, to detect uh, an additional jet, which is what uh, you need uh, to, to compute, for instance, the KT distribution of the Z, uh, the cross section would be uh, would be uh, smaller by a factor of alpha s, which is if you like, it's around 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So the cross section remains large. And even, uh, and even though we are looking at uh, leptonic decays, which are actually 30% of the total for the W and 10% of the total of the, for the Z, uh, 
is such that, that the cross sections for this uh, for this processes will remain large. So this means that this, I mean, we we can really achieve very the experimentalists can achieve very precise measurements for for these processes. And as I tried to argue in the first lecture, we understand that this process pretty well. So really now we have very precise data, very precise uh, theoretical predictions. We can we can compare them and see how well our understanding of the nature works. As far as X production is concerned, actually the cross section is much smaller. And actually you see that uh, X production in gloom gloom fusion, which is the largest uh, uh, between uh, the, the X production channel lies here. So it's much smaller. It's around the factor of 1000 smaller than W and X uh, and X production. So this means that it's much harder to measure. And uh, being much harder to, to measure, measurements are less precise. So it's harder to extract information. All right, now let me uh, move on and uh, uh, let's go back to Drelian. So this is uh, the mass spectrum of Drelian measured by the CMS collaboration uh, not so long ago. And of course, what, what you see in this, in this uh, um, invariant mass spectrum is that there is a lot of structure. And so let me try to highlight what this structure is. Well, first of all, there are uh, the, the, the resonances at low invariant masses. And uh, something I would like to concentrate on is the resonances due to the charm quarks and resonances due to the bottom quarks. I'm going to discuss these resonances, how they were discovered and how they actually led us to discover the charm and the bottom quarks. If you go to larger uh, invariant masses, then uh, you hit the, 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 the peak of the Z. And that's also um, something uh, extremely important because that, that was the confirmation that the, the electric symmetry breaking was actually at work. And so on. So the standard model and the X mechanism was was were working well, um, and so this I will also uh, uh, tell you how the, the Z and also the W bosons were were, were discovered. So now let, let's uh, jump back to 1970. And so back then, uh, Glasho, Iliopoulos, and Mayani introduced uh, the so-called G mechanism, in which they postulated the existence of uh, a new quark. So back then, they only knew the existence of up down and strange well they knew they they um they the, the, the hypothesis was only that the charm uh, up down and strange were there but uh, uh, jim um, uh, put forward the idea of introducing uh, another a fourth quark uh, uh, quark flavor originally this idea was conceived to explain the the suppression of the so-called uh, flavor change in neutral current processes such as uh, the k k0 into uh, K zero bar oscillation in the gym mechanism. This oscillation is is suppressed by 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 the coupling because this only occurs at one loop. And so this 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 model was was able to uh, explain this uh, this suppression. But of course, the moment you introduce uh, a new quark, you also need to take into account the possibility that, that this quark uh, creates bound states. So you should be able to see resonances in the spectrum, for instance, in the And actually, 1974 at BNL, uh, a very narrow peak was observed around uh, 3.1 GeV in uh, uh, proton beryllium uh, into a plus or minus uh, production. This is Drelian. This is exactly what we are talking about. And so that was actually the first observation of JPSI. And JPSI is actually the, uh, the hadron whose uh, um, valence structure is CC bar. So actually discovering the, 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 the JPSI hadron, also the charm was, was discovered. So now, since the valence structure, as I said, of the JPSI is CC bar, and since the mass of this hadron is around uh, 3 GV, then you expect that the mass of the charm is, uh, is around 1.5 GV. And in fact, the, the current uh, PDG value for the charm mass is around there. It's around 1.3 GV. So uh, not many years later, so in 1977, another experiment, E288 at uh, Fermilab, observed another uh, resonance in Indralian production, this time in proton capture and platinum pr production in, uh, in two mu, mu plus mu minus, uh, this time at 1.5 GB. Uh, and uh, actually that was the first observation of uh, what now we call the Upsilon hadron. Uh, and that was also uh, coincided with the, the, the discovery of bottom of the bottom or beauty work. So the, the upsilon hadron has a BB bar as a valence structure. So this, the, 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 the 
the, the value of the resonance around 1.5 suggests that the mass of the bottom is around 4.7 GeV. And actually the, the current value of the, the bottom mass uh, today is around 4.2 GeV. So it's very close to that. Uh, of course, uh, the discovery of the, the bottom quark also had uh, uh, an important implication. So if you introduce uh, a, sixth, a fifth quark at the bottom, then uh, you probably want to complete also the third family of quarks in the standard model. So you also need uh, this immediately triggered the, the hypothesis of the existence of the top quark. So also the top quark was introduced uh, in, the, in the standard model at some point, and the top quark itself was discovered uh, um, uh, a few years later in 1995 at Fermilab uh, and at, uh, at, at Tevatron by the CDF and DCO experiments. Um, the presence of the top quark and of a third family of, of quarks uh, was, was also very important because uh, it allows it allowed for the introduction of the, the so-called CKM matrix, which is a it's, which is fundamentally different from the Kabibo matrix that only mixed the first two families. Now we have a three by three matrix uh, that mixes up and down, down type quarks. And actually, if you go and check, uh, a three by three matrix also implies the possibility of CP violation. So, I mean, having a third family was, was also um, um, uh, introduce the possibility of CP violation in the standard model. We know that the uh, CP violation is there. Now, it, it turns out that actually the CP violation that the standard model allows is probably not enough to explain some phenomena, but actually that was, uh, that was already a, a big step forward. Now, let me move to the discovery of the Z and W boson. So uh, as I said before, uh, the, the Z and the W boson are probably the, the most direct manifestation of the fact that uh, um, one of the gauge symmetries of the standard model, so as you two left, is spontaneously broken. Because if, if it wasn't, then the, these bosons would be massless. They have a mass, so the symmetry has to be broken. It's actually spontaneously broken, and is confirmed by the discovery of the X boson. And so that was also a, a cornerstone for, for us, for, for, that, for our understanding of nature. And so actually this happened back in 1983. And so there were two experiments back then at, uh, at CERN, they were called the UA1 and UA2. And in these papers here, they announced the discovery of the, the charged W bosons. And uh, this again happened in the so-called charged current region in which a W boson is predicted. So you, you collide, a proton and antiproton in this case, and then you produce an intermediate W boson that eventually decays into a charged lepton and a neutrino. Uh, and the mass uh, uh, of this uh, W boson was already back then estimated to be around 80 GP, which is very close to the actual value. And here you see two plots on the left-hand side from UA1 and on the right-hand side from, from uh, UH2, in which uh, uh, they observed the uh, uh, kind of uh, the, the, the so-called uh, Jacobian peak. Because if you look at uh, the transverse energy of the, um, of the observed uh, charge lepton, you should see uh, a, a kind of shoulder a peak around, uh, around the MW over two. And this is exactly what the UA1 and UA2 observed. So actually the signal was, was not that uh, uh, strong. So they, they only had a bunch of uh, events, but the events were quite, uh, enough to, to, to say, to, 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 to claim the discovery. Uh, the same year, the same collaborations published uh, other two papers in which they also announced uh, the discovery of the, the Z boson. Uh, in this time, this time the task was easier. So this was a, again done in Drelian uh, neutral current this time in which, I mean, as we have seen yesterday, you have PP bar, you have an intermediate C that the case into uh, E plus C minus, you just look at the invariant mass of E plus C minus. So this time you can actually detect the both leptons. Uh, and then you should really see a peak around the, the, the mass of the, the Z. And this is exactly what uh, both collaboration observed. And here on the left-hand side, you see a plot taken from the, the UHU uh, paper. And what I found remarkably is that now, uh, almost 40 years ago, the UHU collaboration already uh, came up with the, Quite uh, uh, with a quite precise determination of the Z mass. So they 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 quoted 91.9 with an uncertainty of around 2 GB. So okay, of course today the, the uncertainty and the, the value of the Z mass is much better known, but it was quite remarkable that 
back then the uncertainty was already so small. So now this kind of completes, uh, you know, it's 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 a nice picture because I mean what I've tried to argue is that by using Drelian we have managed to discover the charm and the bottom quirks and also to discover the, the cage boson. So this is how in history Drelian has been used for discovery. So now let me move to more modern applications of Drelian and now Drelian is used for uh, for other purposes for for constraining other quantities. Um, probably one of the most prominent, prominent quantities that uh, uh, heavily depend on Drelian is PDFs, collinear PDFs. In fact, this, uh, this process is amongst uh, the most important processes for PDF determinations. Uh, the first is probably the IS, the second is, is Drelian. Uh, Drelian, as opposed to the IS, uh, though, gives access, access to a, a larger variety of core combinations. And in particular, Drelian uh, enables for, for an anti-flavor, flavor anti-flavor anti separation. It's something that the IS can do, but only uh, relatively well using the charge car and the IS. Drelian is, is very important to achieve the separation between quarks and anti-quarks. Uh, it is important uh, to know that uh, Drelian, as, as I, I said at the beginning of the second lecture, covers a very wide uh, kinematic region. So if, for instance, if you look at collider data, uh, as you can see from the, the green box, so this plot is essentially the, the distribution in Q square and VR can X of the data included in uh, the NLPF 3.1. PDF uh, determination. Actually, right yesterday, the, the, the NMPDF 4.0 uh, PDF set was released in which they include even more data, but this, this already gives you an idea. And so the green box contains the collider trillion data. And you see that it's, it's placed at, at, at pretty uh, large energies, but uh, the, the color in, in X is very wide. So it goes from essentially from one all the way down to 10 to the minus four. So it really allows us to, uh, to constrain PDFs in a very wide region. Uh, in addition, uh, there, is also, um, uh, there is also fixed target uh, Drelian uh, production data, mostly, mostly produced by, 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 by fixed target experiments at Fermilab. And they are placed at uh, lower values, but larger values of X. So this is a question for you. Can you, can you guess why fixed target uh, Drelian data is placed at larger values of X? And so this, this bit of information is also very important to constrain PDFs because in, in this region, PDFs, in the large X region, PDFs are not very well known yet. In addition, um, there is also QT distributions for, for the set production. And as I will argue uh, later, this, this distribution also gives us access to the gluon uh, PDF, which is also very important to, to constrain well. So, I mean, in, in conclusion, the precision of the, this modern data, so collider data, but those of fixed target data, including, for instance, the Sequest uh, data that, that has been released very, very recently, drives uh, PDF determination. So PDF determinations really rely on Drelian data to, 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 to get accurate determinations. Now, let me discuss uh, in, in one slide uh, why fixed target uh, Drelian uh, is important for PDFs. The reason is that this helps us uh, constrain the so called C, C PDFs. So, uh, just to give you uh, flavor, so as I said, there is this Sequest experiment that has released data for the, the ratio between uh, uh, for the cross section. The, for, for, for the cross section for the collision of proton neutron over proton proton. And actually, this particular ration is very important for the C quark uh, distributions. By, by C quark distributions, I actually mean of the proton, actually. I, I actually mean uh, the distribution, the, the, the distributions associated to quark uh, flavors or anti flavors that don't belong to the valence structure. So we know that uh, the proton is made of uh, two, 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 uh, two ups and one down. So whatever is not up or down is, is called. Uh, um, is called C. And actually, uh, as I was trying to argue, this uh, ratio measured by, by uh, the sequest experiment is, is, uh, is very much sensitive to the ratio of D bar over U bar. So it's, it's a very nice exercise for you to prove that uh, this is the case. So as I said before, this is a fixed target experiment. And so this gives access to the large X uh, region. And so this allows us to, to, to constrain PDFs in that region. 
And so here you see in these plots uh, what uh, the, the, C, the, the inclusion of this data into a PDF fit uh, uh, does uh, to, to the predictions on the left hand side. So you see that this before the inclusion, this is after. So you see that actually the predictions, of course, tend to be more in line with the sequest data. And also the uncertainties shrink. And it's also important to notice in the right hand plot side what is the effect on the PDFs of this data. And so you see by looking, for instance, at the red band, that the reduction of the uncertainty band of the, this combination, B bar minus U bar, becomes much smaller as, as you include this data as compared, for instance, so to, to, to fields in which this data is not there. Um, as you have probably noticed here, uh, there, there are two experiments in this in these plots. One is sequest, the other is the so-called uh, new C. Uh, there are actually uh, the both experiments of Fermilab, and there seems to be quite a tension between these databases that currently, as far as I know, hasn't been solved yet. So now let me go to the QT distribution of Intralian of the debt and the impact of this uh, this uh, distribution on the on the on the gluon PDF. So um, I would like to go through this slide very quickly because I have a lot of material I'd like to discuss this. But the, the question is that as we argued yesterday, um, um, in order to have the QT, uh, in order to use a, a collinear factorization, we also need to to have uh, a QT of the Z that is large. In this regime, the actual uh, process that uh, we would like to look at is uh, PP into Z plus one jet because we need a jet within an object against which the Z uh, recoil uh, recalls. So in such a way that we have a QT of the Z that is large enough. At the leading order, this the, the one of the leading processes that uh, that. Uh, um, drive this uh, this observable is, is shown here. So you have a quark and a gluon uh, that enter and then they annihilate and they produce a Z and a hard jet. So you see that this process is already is sensitive to the gluon PDF already at, at the leading order. So the Atlas ATV data for the QT distribution at large QT, so QT larger than 30 GB was used to constrain the, the gluon PDFs in, the, in this paper. And in these plots, you see on the left-hand side, you see the gluon PDF itself before the green band and after the inclusion of the, the Atlas data, the blue band. And you see that actually the impact is quite significant uh, in, in many regions. And this is a, this is a plot of the gluon gluon lumin luminosity, which is a kind of, it's, it's a combination of uh, gluon PDFs that is particularly relevant, for instance, if you are looking for, for the for the exposure. So the impact is, of course, very significant. And that's that's another um, that's another bit of information that uh, Trellian brings us. Then uh, uh, if we promote the photon to be a part, and so if we allow for uh, the photon to, to, to contribute to, to the structure of the proton, then we also need to introduce a photon PDF. And if you introduce a photon PDF uh, in, the, in, the, in the proton, then uh, Drellian receives uh, a leading order, order contribution from photon-photon collision. And this is the, the leading order diagram that, uh, that contributes to this process. So in these plots, what you see, you see the Drellian invariant mass distribution at low uh, invariant masses and at very large invariant masses. So, and uh, the, the different curves, so you should concentrate on the, 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 the red and the green curves. So the, the blue, the, the red curve shows you the, 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 the QCD contribution coming from QQ bar. And so in the, the low invariant mass region, you, you see the typical shape of the, the spectrum with the, the Z peak. And you see that uh, the, Q, the QCD distribution as compared to the gamma gamma contribution, which is the green band is, is, is much larger. So this means that in this region, actually the, uh, the photon PDF doesn't really contribute. But if you go to very large invariant masses, and this is what the second plot shows, the photon contribution becomes uh, tends to become of the same order of the, the QQ bar distribution. So this means that if you have data uh, for Drellian in, in this in this in this region, you are able to constrain the photon PDF, particularly in the large X region because you are at very large invariant masses. 
And so this is what uh, has been done in this paper. So again, the Atlas ATV data at high invariant masses were exploited to, to constrain the, the, the photon PDF. And so on the right-hand side, you see a comparison between uh, data and predictions in a, in a, in a bin in, uh, in invariant mass that is very, it's very large, between 500 and 500 GV. And so you see that the agreement is pretty good. And actually, this very good agreement is, is allowed by the presence of the photon. And on the left-hand side, you see the photon PDF itself at some very large scale as extracted by, by this determination, which is the, the reddish curve as compared to other determinations. So, I mean, using this data, uh, people have been able to, to extract the photon PDF to quite some uh, good accuracy. Now, let me discuss the W mass determination because this is also very important. So, we, we all know that the measuring the W mass to very good accuracy means testing the standard model, but also means um, uh, also means uh, understanding what are the possible extensions of the, the, the standard model, because we need that eventually the standard model will need to be extended. So we need to, to measure this, uh, this uh, parameter of the standard model in the best possible way. In this plot here, you see the different determinations of the W mass and uh, their, their combination in the world average. Actually, there is an old combination before the Atlas data and the new one after the Atlas data. But something that I would like to stress is that there are actually two kinds of processes in which uh, that, that can be used to determine the, the, the mass of the W. One is E plus E minus into W plus W minus. So it's in uh, um, E plus E minus colliders. And the other is actually Drelian, uh, charge current Drelian, in which we have PP into uh, a lepton and a neutrino. And as you can see, the, uh, the uncertainty of the determination from, from the radium production actually drives uh, the, the, the average because the, the uncertainties in the plus and minus tend, tend to be much larger. So this means that Dralian is also extremely important, drives uh, the, the, the determination of the W mass. So we need to measure it at best. Now, here there is a plot uh, uh, that shows uh, the, the cross-section um, differential uh, with respect to the transverse momentum of the uh, charge uh, lepton in, in, in charge current rayon. This is observable that actually people use to determine the, the invariant, uh, the, the, the mass of the W, because uh, this particular observable as uh, the so-called, as I said before, uh, Jacobian peak, that is picked, uh, that, that, that essentially uh, is placed around the W mass uh, over two. And so by making this called template fits, they, the, the people can, can determine the W mass. Uh, something that this plus show is that, uh, uh, so there is the, 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 um, the black curve that shows the distribution of this, uh, of the, the transverse momentum of the electron when the, the transverse momentum of the W is set to zero. So this, this sharp uh, distribution. Then uh, you, you may, you, you should include the, the contribution for the PT of the W being different from zero. And this is what gives you the red points. And then on top of that, uh, if you want to compare two data, you also need to, to include the detector resolution effects. And this is given by the, the yellow, uh, the yellow uh, histogram. So you see that the, uh, the biggest uh, contribution uh, is given, a big contribution is given by, by when the, the PT of the W is small. So this means that we really need to take into account the PT distribution of the W, which can be done by using uh, the, all the tools that uh, we have discussed yesterday. So this means that we really need to model the PT of the W all across the board. So from low to large uh, PT to estimate the, the W, the PT of the lepton at best, and thus measure the, the W, the W mass at best. So now let me move to, uh, to higher order corrections. Yesterday we have introduced collinear factorizations and we have seen that collinear factorization is essentially a way to uh, reproduce the parton model at leading order and uh, to uh, improve on the parton model by computing uh, uh, higher order corrections uh, and uh, this this how these higher order corrections do 
when when it comes, for instance, to, to computing the, the spectrum uh, of the of the lepton pair in in Rayan production. So in this plot, you see a comparison between the data uh, taken by uh, CMS and a prediction at next to next living order in QCD, which means including or up to uh, all the alpha squared in the partonic cross section, and this also includes next living order lepton weak corrections, which which means including all the alpha. Um, corrections. And so you see that the, the agreement between the data and uh, the prediction is, is actually is, is very is remarkable. So I mean, they're really spot on. So this means that uh, um, higher order corrections are important. Actually, if you remember yesterday, we have seen that higher order corrections do uh, move the, the determination. So this means that if you were to to, to plot, uh, for instance, the leading order uh, contribution here, the leading order uh, computation here that would be totally off. So this means that next to next living order corrections and in general higher order corrections are, are very important. Now let, let's go more differential as we did yesterday and let's see how the, the perturbative uh, uh, corrections do when it comes to describing the rapidity distribution. So this is a plot uh, that compares uh, the, 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 the calculation of the rapidity distribution at leading order, next to living order and next to next to living order actually here using two different PDF sets to uh, the CDF data uh, around the, the set peak. And so you see that the leading order distribution is totally off. The next to leading order distribution gets, gets better, but it's still systematically uh, below the data. And then as you include next to, next to leading order uh, corrections, actually the agreement uh, gets, uh, gets much better. This also depends on the PDFs and actually this particular distributions uh, is used to, to fit PDFs. So this means that including next and next link order corrections and using uh, the, uh, say, accurate PDFs really allows us to describe this data uh, quite uh, um, accurately. And actually the same also holds for a data, more recent data measured at, uh, at uh, the LSC. So these are uh, Atlas data uh, in different uh, uh, in different environment mass bins. They are still, they're all the repeated distributions. Uh, and what you can see is that if you again include the next to next living order corrections, QCD, and possibly also electric corrections, the agreement between predictions and data is, is remarkably good. Now let's move to QT distributions. Uh, so there are critical, this, uh, this is a critical observable as we have seen yesterday. So very, uh, qu quite recently, next to next living order corrections to, uh, to this process have been, uh, have been computed. So here actually we are talking about PP into Z plus one jet because we need an object uh, to recoil against. So the, the leading order is alpha S, so the next to next to leading order is alpha S cube. And so the calculation allows us to, to compute this observable. And on the left-hand side, you see the PT distribution computed at three different orders, starting from leading order to the next to, next to leading order. And on the right-hand side, you see the repeat distribution, but within, uh, within cuts. And so since you have to impose cuts, actually also you, you need the fully differential calculation. So this is something that, for instance, using this calculation couldn't have done. This is only made possible by the possibility, by, by the, the availability of this process. So uh, next to leading, next to next to leading order corrections in the application domain, which is a large PT and the central rapidities are not that large, but uh, significant. We will see a little later how significant they are. And so in particular, they, they, they improve the agreement with data. And uh, remarkably, the, the reduction of the, the, the theoretical uncertainty, which is given by VAR in this case, gets much smaller as you go to higher order. So this also signals the fact that the perturbative series is converging. Um, so now let me go and uh, show you how these predictions compare to data. And so in this plot, uh, you see how the Atlas uh, data uh, taken in different uh, invariant mass bins uh, compared to the next to leading and next to next to leading or the predictions for the, the, the PT distribution of the Z. So I've uh, um, 
highlighted two different regions, what are called high QT region and low QT regions, where the transition, uh, the transition point is around 20 GV. And this, this made them propose to highlight where uh, the fixed order calculation is supposed to, to work in the high QT region and where it's supposed to break down. So what you observe is that in the high QT region, uh, the next to next leading order calculation helps um, improve the agreement with the data. So now the calculation and the data are really spot on. So in the high QT region, we are really able to, 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 to get data quite, quite nicely. At low QT, the inclusion of an extra next leading order corrections helps capture the, the behavior of the cross section. But as you can see, in, in most of the beans, the deviation is still large. So this means that in this region here, despite we, we now have next to next to leading order corrections, resumation to, to all order is still needed to get an accurate description of this data in this region. So now let me go and, and, and tell you how resumation performs in the, in the locality region. But before doing that, let me recall you that yesterday we have introduced the so-called CSS procedure. And so in this, in, this, uh, in this formalism, the QT distribution is expressed in terms of a W term that essentially uh, encodes the resumation. So this term here resumes all the, the logarithmically announced terms. And then you have the Y term, which contains uh, the, the powers, uh, powers correct, power corrections like QT over, over Q to some power. So we know how to compute W, we have seen it yesterday, but we don't quite know how to compute, well, I didn't tell you how to compute Y. Uh, and here I just want to sketch how Y is computed, one of the possible ways of computing W. So what we know is that W, uh, sorry, Y has to compute, has to contain only powers of QT over Q. So then how do we derive Y? Well, let's start with W. So we know that this contains all the logarithmically announced terms sum to all, to all powers of alpha S. So the structure looks like this. So you see that for each power of alpha S, you have a log. And then depending on the logarithmic accuracy, you have this parameter. You can, you can take, for instance, m equals 0, which is the leading log. And then here you have all the leading log uh, terms, all of them, to all orders in alpha s. Then on the other hand, we have the fixed order calculation, say, at next to the p leading order. And so this calculation contains all the log terms uh, and all the power corrections up to some power in alpha s, p plus 1. And this is the structure of the calculation. So you have the logarithmically announced terms plus power corrections. Now it, it has to be, it, I mean, it is a requirement that the, the logarithmically announced terms in the resum uh, calculation up to some power in alpha s have to match those in, in the fixed order calculation. So this means that if you take the fixed order calculation and then you subtract to it the expansion of the uh, resumed calculation to the same power in alpha s, then we're just left with these power corrections. And these power corrections is exactly what we are after, is, is the, the y term. So this is how the y term uh, is computed. This is actually one of the, the ways in which the, uh, the y term is computed. There are actually other ways and possible question to you is how uh, how other alternatives to matching procedures work. So this, to show you how this uh, matching uh, performs. So here you have the green, uh, which shows you the W term. So there is a mention. So this will be eight, it's hidden behind the, the, the black curve. Then you have the fixed order, which is the red. And you see that that low values of QT that just goes crazy, it becomes very large and then drops. And then you have the expansion of the W term to the same order of the fixed order. And then what you see is that the blue and red curves tend to be very similar as small QT. And this is a confirmation of the fact that the log announced term in the fixed order and the expansion of W match. And that that's actually what happens. And then what I've done in the um, uh, black curve is to just mix them. So you have the W and then you have the Y term, which is the fixed order minus the expansion. Now it, it happens that uh, the difference between the matched and the fixed order can be pretty large at large QT. You know that uh, this, uh, this difference is subleading. So it's, it's, it's usually something you, you, you may allow for because it's something that you don't have control on. But actually the difference can be large. 
So what you can do, you may want to dump away this difference because we know that the fixed order calculation works pretty well. So this is done by introducing a dumping function. And so this function exactly does this. So it, uh, it dumps away subleading terms. So another question for you is to, to guess how this function should be able to do this job. So now let me just go and see how this procedure works when compared to data. Sorry for the background. Um, so, and here you see a measurement taken by uh, Atlas at 13 GB of the, the, the PT distribution of the Z. Uh, and then uh, you see it compared to, well, different predictions, but I would like to draw your attention of the, the green curve in the, the big plot. Uh, and then here in the inset, I've uh, put uh, the, the same data uh, cut at 10 GB compared to the fixed order calculation. We have seen this, uh, this plot yesterday. And so here in this plot here, we just have the fixed order. And in the, the bigger plot, we have the matched calculation. So first of all, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that if you go and check what happens around 10 GB, which is this region in this plot and this region in this plot, now the resumation starts doing its job. And then you see that the agreement between predictions and data is, is pretty good. So this means that the resumation starts taking over in this region and it's doing the a very good job. It's, it's, it's bringing up us in agreement uh, with the data. Um, there is also another thing that I would like uh, your, I would like you to notice is that if you go to the very first beans when kit is very small, then there is, a, I mean, the, the predictions are still in, in pretty good agreement with the data, but uh, the, the, they start to deviate. So this is actually the, 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 the onset of non perturbative corrections. And this is what I would like to discuss next. And so this is just a, a reminder for you of how non perturbative corrections are introduced, but we have seen it at the beginning today, so I'm not going through that. And this is just a plot to show you how the introduction of non perturbative transverse uh, um, contribution helps us uh, describe the data. So here you see a specific invariant mass pin of uh, the Atlas uh, ATB data and, and also specific uh, um, uh, rapidity pin. And uh, the blue curve shows you the, uh, the resumation calculation without any non perturbative effect. And so you see that it does pretty well, but the first bin is quite off by, by around 10%. Then what has been done in this paper is, 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 was to include the um, non perturbative corrections, is what this PB19 stands for. And then once you introduce non perturbative corrections that are actually fit to the data, then you see that also the first bin is, is very nicely described. So this means that non perturbative corrections are actually needed in this page. So now let me uh, finally move in the, the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, to X production. And uh, so I will be mostly concentrating on. Uh, inclusive X production in gluon gluon fusion. We have seen at the beginning that this uh, the, the process amongst those in which uh, an X boson is produced with the largest uh, cross section. And uh, one of the reasons, probably the main reason why, um, considering this uh, uh, this process fits well with the discussion we have carried so far about Drelian, is the fact that X production and Drelian uh, both have a colorless final state. So this simple fact, uh, such that uh, the, the initial state and uh, the final state are not entangled through color connections, um, is such that uh, most of the tools developed for Drelian can also be uh, exploited for X production. And so I'm talking about uh, factorization, uh, collinear TMD, and resumation. So this means that we can really use the, the same tools also for describing this process. In addition, for this particular, uh, for this particular uh, process, the GG into H, uh, uh, there is an effective field theory in which one sends the top mass uh, to, to zero, uh, to, to infinity. And this is such because uh, this is uh, useful because uh, the GG uh, into X uh, vertex in the standard model looks like this, in which you have a triangle in which all possible quarks circulate. But of course, here you have a coupling to the X, which is proportional to the mass of the quark. So this means that the top mass is by far the, the dominant uh, contribution. Then you can send empty to, to, to infinity, and then you can really integrate out the, 
the, the contribution of the top. And then you really end up having an effective, uh, an effective uh, vertex in the Lagrangian. So what you can do, you can use the NF equal five uh, D Lagrangian, which we have all the quarks up to the bottom. And then you introduce the, um, a, a new term in, in the Lagrangian, which accounts for the, the coupling between the X and the gluons. And then you just use this Lagrangian to compute diagrams uh, uh, to, to, to find the corrections, the higher order corrections to this, this process. Um, of course, the coupling that you introduce here being connected to this uh, kind of loops, which also receives uh, higher order corrections, uh, requires that this coupling is, is also computed to, to, to highest, uh, the highest possible order in alpha s. It starts at order alpha I squared, but actually you can include more corrections. And this has been done up to next to next reading order in this paper. In addition, the partonic cross sections for this particular process have been computed also up to next to next reading order uh, in this paper. Again, like in the case of uh, uh, Drelian, since we are interested in uh, the KT of the, the Higgs, uh, the relevant process is X plus jet, because again, we need an X to recoil against something, and this something is typically jet. So this, uh, all these uh, uh, things uh, enable us to compute uh, the cross-section, uh, the QT distribution of X in gluon gluon fusion up to next to next to leading order. Of course, so we need to limit to, to, to the region in which QT is of the order of the, the X mass, because otherwise we know that, that there are large logs, but we will discuss them in a, in a second. So this is how uh, the next to next to leading order computation for this uh, process uh, compares to data. On the left, you see the comparison to the Atlas data and on the left, uh, the comparison to the, uh, and on the right, the comparison to the CMS data. So um, th there are a couple of things to notice here. F first of all, uh, higher order corrections help uh, describe the data. So you see that as you include more corrections, uh, the, the predictions uh, get closer to the data. So you see uh, blue, green, red, get closer and closer to the data in both cases, Atlas and CMS. In addition, again, uh, the reduction of the, the theoretical uncertainty on the predictions is also signaling uh, a convergence of the perturbative series, meaning that we are really getting uh, more precise. Uh, but unfortunately, it's something that was kind of uh, uh, announced in, in the beginning. Uh, uh, the cross-section for this process is small, so the, 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 the experimental uncertainties are pretty large. Uh, and so this means that actually uh, the comparison is, uh, is encouraging, but uh, the data uncertainties doesn't really allow us, uh, allows us to, to say much about, about uh, the, the calculation itself, whether some other corrections are needed or not. So now let me go to the low QT region. And as I anticipated, uh, for X production, we can use the very same tools we have used for Drelian. And in particular, the CSS formalism, as well as the TMD factorization formulas apply almost uh, out of the box. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for for X production in gluon gluon fusion. So all you have to do in principle is to replace the, the quarks with gluons. And so this is how the CSS formula for GG in tweaks uh, looks like. So again, you have a, a W term that encodes resumation and a Y term that encodes power corrections. And then you can write it in the TMD, uh, in the TMD format in this way, in which you have uh, a convolution of Fourier a convolution between gluon TMD distributions. Now, actually, in the case of X production, uh, the situation is slightly more complicated than in Drelian because, uh, because there are the so-called linearly polarized gluons that contribute to the cross-section. Because the, the formula I have shown you in the, in the previous slide was uh, uh, based on considering only unpolarized gluons. But actually, if you go and check, uh, also linearly polarized gluons colliding uh, can give rise to can give rise to the same unpolarized uh, final state. And so this means that we need to include uh, a new contribution coming from this uh, uh, from these uh, different uh, uh, differently polarized uh, gluons. And actually, in the TMD formalism, this uh, 
uh, entails introducing a new TMD uh, distribution for the one that is typically called bull murders, uh, TMD distribution. It's typically indicated with the H1 perp. And this distribution parameterizes the distribution of linearly polarized gluons inside uh, an unpolarized atom. And so we also need to include the, the contribution for this uh, for this guy. And actually, if B is much smaller than lambda QCD uh, to the minus one, then this guy can be matched onto the unpolarized collinear uh, gluon uh, PDF by means of uh, perturbatively computable uh, matching, uh, matching functions. So at the end of the day, the QT distribution for GG um, into X uh, production is essentially like the CCS, the CSS formalism uh, with uh, the, the function C. And then you have another contribution in which you replace the function C with the function G which takes into account uh, the linearly polarized gluon. So it's almost the same. And you can write the same thing in the TMD uh, uh, fashion in which you have the unpolarized gluon TMD uh, PDFs. But on top of that, you also have a contribution that depends on the bull models uh, TMD uh, PDFs. Uh, then, of course, uh, the same argument concerning uh, the Landau pole applies also here. So you have a pole that you need to regularize. So by doing that, you also introduce non perturbative corrections that you can parameterize in, a, in, a, in a appropriate, appropriate um, uh, non perturbative functions. And you do the very same thing for, for the bull motors uh, contribution. Um, so, and then what you can do, you can go and check what is the effect of the, the bull motors of the, the, the linearly polarized good ones. So, in this plot taken from, from this paper, you see that the short dashed. Uh, curve shows the cross section without linearly polarized gluons. And then uh, what the authors have done is to include the, the linearly uh, polarized uh, uh, gluons uh, by summing them or by subtracting them. And so you see that uh, the difference uh, is, is, is moderate. Is not that large, but it is there. And But the reason why they've added or subtracted is the fact that uh, if you add them, if, so if the bull Mulder's contribution add up to the unpolarized um, uh, contribution, this means that uh, the X is a scalar uh, boson. If instead you get the minus between the two, so you need to subtract the bull Mulder's contribution, actually we are, we are observing uh, a pseudo scalar uh, X. So this is relevant. So we, we still don't, well, we are not quite sure yet whether the X is scalar or pseudo scalar. So this kind of, this kind of distributions could, could tell us uh, something about that. Unfortunately, though, if you if you go and try to compare the predictions with linearly polarized gluons with the current data, well, actually, you cannot say much. This, this is shown in this plot in which, in which the, the QT distribution for uh, X production uh, um, that, that eventually decays into a pair of photons is compared to the CMS data. And so you see that the uncertainties are, are such that we cannot really say much about, about whether, for instance, the, 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 the X is a scalar or a pseudo scalar. Now, this brings me to essentially my last slide, if I'm not wrong. And uh, actually, I just wanted to complete the picture to show you um, a very detailed study of the, uh, the X QT spectrum using a matched uh, calculation. So it's exactly as uh, as I've been discussed, I've been discussing before for days in which you match the resumation to the to the fixed order calculation uh, to to obtain a, a prediction that that is accurate over for, for all values of the PP of the X. And so they have done it uh, for uh, um, a realistic uh, process in which they also allowed the, the X to decay into uh, two photons. And they also implemented the realistic cuts on the final state photons, which is something very important if you eventually want to compute, to, you want to compare these predictions to data. And so in these plots, uh, you see on the left-hand side, you see the next cube bleeding log resumption matched to the next leading order fixed order calculations. And on the right hand side, you see the next cube leading log matched to the next to next leading order fixed order calculations. So there are some uh, expected patterns. First of all, uh, uh, fixed order is uh, unreliable as small QT. And this, uh, this is shown by the fact that uh, the, the green curves are very different at low QT 
between next to living water and next to next to living water. So this means that uh, the, the um, perturbative series is not converging down there. So this means that there are large logs that need to be resumed. Um, there is, however, in the high QT region, a reduction of the theoretical uncertainty on the um, on the fixed order predictions. We have already seen them, and actually this signaling the fact that uh, the perturbative series, if the, the, the QT of the X is large enough, is converging. And then, of course, at very low values of QT, the, the, the resumption is, um, is, is dominating, and so the, the behavior is more or less the same. So there are there is some difference between uh, the uncertainties here and actually they also say that uh, this is due to probably next to next to being ordered to some uh, accidental uh, cancellation between resumation and fixed order. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, we don't have data to compare to, so we cannot uh, we cannot tell much about uh, how well we describe the nature, but uh, the tools are there. And uh, so we just need to, more data to, uh, to compare uh, them uh, to. So yeah, this uh, this concludes my second lecture. And uh, thank you all. And if there is any questions, they are welcome. Thank you. Thanks very much, Valerio, for the summary and uh, giving us a glimpse of the way that QCD affects those not typical QCD processes. I see one question in the chat already. I don't know if you can see it. I can read it out. What does it mean that we allow the photon to contribute to the proton structure on site 17? All right. Do, yes. Do we treat it as one of the quarks or gluons of the? Do we treat it as one of the quarks or gluons or the C quark? But why should we do that? All right. All right. So yeah, that's uh, that's a relevant question. So what we really mean is that uh, uh, well, in the in the in the, in the first lecture, uh, I've been looking at the proton like a QCD object. So I was only really thinking about quarks and gluons. But actually, parton, the concept of parton is a general one. So whatever contributes to the, the, to the flavor to that the, the hadron structure can, can be uh, promoted to be a gluon. So in particular, if you extend the picture to QCD, of QCD to include also QED effects, for instance, then you also need to allow for the presence of uh, photons and actually also leptons inside the, the, the proton. So just to give you an example, so suppose you have a, a quark in uh, in your in your um, proton, then the quark can emit can emit a photon if you allow for QED effects. So this means that the, the photon does contribute to the uh, to the um, proton structure if if you also include QED effects. Of course, QED effects are expected to be smaller as compared to QCD effect because the coupling is smaller. So I mean, the production of this uh, photon out of a quark will be uh, will be um, reduced by the fact that the, the, the QED coupling is around one order of magnitude smaller than the QCD one. Um, so now how do we treat that? Well, we treat it the, the way QCD tells us to, QED tells us to treat it. So the, 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 the photon is, um, is a vector boson. And actually, there are uh, you you, the, 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 you can compute uh, you can compute uh, partonic diagrams in which you have the photon in the initial state, despite that you have, uh, for instance, proton-proton collision. And then you just follow the, the rules of, of QED, and then you can come up with all, uh, with all possible uh, diagrams to compute and also with evolution equations uh, for, for the photon that actually couple the photon to the quarks. Uh, and that's pretty much the way you treat it. I wouldn't define uh, the, the photon a C quark, like a C quark, of course, that's a different thing, but it's, it's pretty much like the QED counterpart of the gluon. So, uh, and so the reason why we do that is, as, as I tried to argue, is that in some specific corners, so for instance, if you look at the Drelian at very large invariant masses, the contribution due to the uh, photon PDF becomes relevant and you need to take into, into account. So, and that's, that's the motivation to take into account, uh, take into account these effects. Thanks, thanks a lot. It was very clear. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Not, are there any further questions for right now? I don't see any in the chat so far, and also no hands raised. Maybe around 
Thanks for time just a little bit. All the information, I don't know, Valeria, whether you are going to be available in the evening as well for any further yes, questions. Yes, yes, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, by, by tonight, I will also have uh, a few seed questions that uh, maybe would be uh, help the discussion. Cool, that sounds good. So everyone uh, can think about um, further questions they might have. I hope today is also not as busy um, a schedule as we had yesterday, so that you have a bit more uh, time and strength to prepare for the recitation session. So I um, think we can say thanks again to Valeria for the lecture series, and um, we'll take a break now and see each other again at 2 p.m. Central European time. Or in your time zone. See you then. And Valerie, see you tonight. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.